welcome to another episode of ECCB Connects. March 8th marks International Women's Day each year. This year, the theme is Choose to Challenge. And in celebration, we speak with three women working at the ECCB as they share with us their personal and professional experiences, as well as what they choose to challenge in celebration of International Women's Day 2021. Stay with us. We'll share more with you after the break. ECCB Digital Dialogues. Climate change continues to pose a threat to small island developing states and requires urgent action as our countries formulate sustainable and green recovery plans in response to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. How will a green recovery plan help our countries and people? A green recovery plan will create new employment and business opportunities. It will also help to increase our resilience against the recurrent threats of violent and destructive natural disasters and help to protect the environment through reduction in carbon emissions. ECCB Digital Dialogues. Join Governor of the ECCB, Timothy N.J. Antoine, and a panel of experts for ECCB Digital Dialogues on pandemic and climate resilience. They will discuss the urgent imperative of building climate resilience as a key element for ensuring the recovery, resilience, and the transformation of the region. The distinguished panelists include Managing Director of Solaricon Limited, Dr. James Fletcher, Practice Manager, Energy and Extractives World Bank Group, Stephanie Gill, and the Principal of the Rocky Mountain Institute, David Gums. ECCB Digital Dialogues. Join the conversation on Thursday, 11th March at 10 a.m. on the ECCB Connects Facebook page, YouTube channel, and your local radio stations. Be part of the live poll and share your questions and comments. Visit the ECCB's website for more information. ECCB Digital Dialogues. Let's take collective action to transform our region now. Alamina, Shaman, Janelle, welcome to ECCB Connects. Alamina, I'll start with you. Alamina, you are the youngest member, woman member of the ECCB's management team. What support have you received from other women in the organization as you progressed professionally in the institution? The support from other women, um, Karina, has been absolutely fantastic. From the, from the time I entered the bank, I have had female supervisors, female directors, and they have been extremely supportive. They've been encouraging. They've been, um, you know, pushing me to think bigger, think broader, um, expand my vision and scope in internal auditing and for the department and my future and everything else. I mean, they've been some fantastic coaches and mentors. And I, in part, I owe where I am today to, to, to them. That's excellent. Shamin, I'm, I'm switching to you now. You are the ECCB's first chief risk officer. What has this been like taking on the role of a, a completely new job, something uncharted before as a woman? What has that been like for you? Well, Karina, first I must say it was an honor to be selected to be the bank's first chief risk officer. And it has been an exciting journey from beginning until now. The area of risk management is evolving. It's a, it's a relatively new area and it's always changing, it's rapidly changing. And having the opportunity to build the bank's enterprise risk management framework from the ground up has been an exciting journey and I have learned so much in the past four years. And Shaman, I know as well that you are also um, taking the lead in channeling the bank's digital transformation agenda. What is the significance of that for the people of the ECCU? So the DCASH project or the digital cash project is a life-changing project for the people of the ECCU because what it does, it gives them the opportunity to be part of the digital landscape of the whole digital transformation for the region. And one of the key things that we're focusing on is financial inclusion. That means all citizens of the ECCU can actually enjoy the benefits of the financial services. So something as simple as paying online with the DCASH, any member of the ECCU can actually pay bills online, even though they don't have a debit card or credit card. Once they have the DCASH, they can have that benefit. So something as simple as that to us is really a big change for the ECCU. 
And we know, particularly in the COVID-19 environment and landscape, digital transformation is especially important to taking us into the future. And even though at the time when we actually started this project in 2019, the COVID-19 virus was not a reality then, the Bcash project has become even more important now with all the social distancing and physical distancing. The, the project has taken on new life and new interests because of these restrictions that we have and how this will now play a part in helping that cause. We look forward to seeing um, this project realized and brought out to the people of the region. Yes, I do too. Janelle, you are an information security analyst uh, working in the field of information technology, which some would consider traditionally a male-dominated field. Now, now, as a professional in, in this industry, how has it been for you as a woman, and particularly at the ECCB? Well, I consider myself fortunate. The STEAM disciplines, as you rightly mentioned, are heavily regarded as being male-dominated. But when I joined the bank, I had the benefit of having other female counterparts to work alongside me. I had the benefit of the Honorable Akila Byron Nisbet, who is our new Minister of IT, and my now director, Mrs. Cindy Paris Gilbert, working alongside me. We even had our own Agnola Rogers, who was our capable support in MISD at the time. So she too helped to, to eradicate the stereotype of a male-dominated IT industry. This, so these sterling examples of women IT certainly helped to shield me from the stereotype. And since then, ECCB has hired even more talented young women and placed them in positions in IT in the hopes of eradicating the stereotype. It really is an encouragement to hear about um, the support that all of you have received from women and how, how integral women are to, you know, making the region progress further. We've, we spoke about your work and we know it's, it's a lot, it's demanding. How do you balance your work obligations with other life responsibilities? And Shamin, I'll go to you first. Thanks, Karina. It has been a challenge, particularly in recent times, we've had to balance my role as a chief risk officer and my mm -hmm. role as a the chair of the FinTech group, which is rolled out the Bcash project. It has been a challenge. But I also know it's important to find time for family and find time for extracurricular activities. <clears throat> so there are times when I have to deliberately cut off work and do what I have to do with my family or church-wise or even the community uh, or even just having a night out. It is important. The balance is very, very important. And so even though the work is very demanding, I have made deliberate efforts to make to strike that balance, particularly in recent times. And it helps because if you're not, if you're too tired or you're too um, frustrated, the work gets to you, then you won't be as productive as you can be. So it is very important to take that break and, you know, get involved in other stuff. So I have made deliberate efforts very often to do that. Janelle, what about you? Are there any specific activities that you do to make sure you stay balanced and level? Oh, so many things. So as a friend, a wife, a mother, an athlete, a professional, and an engaged community citizen, I, I do juggle my time all the time. I actually don't shy away from pursuing my many passions because I think it's important to be about more than just one thing. It's important for me and my well-being. It's important for my kids to see the value of working, playing, and getting involved. And so with all of this involvement, it's a constant juggle. Um, if you are familiar with the old adage that it takes a village to raise a child, I want to offer that it also takes a village to achieve work-life balance. And as much as I try to do it all, it, I wouldn't even be able to do a fraction of that if it weren't for the unwavering support of my husband, my family, and my husband's family they make work-life balance happen for me. Janelle, I love how you've taken that, that, that saying and applied it. I, I never thought about it like that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it on board for now. Alamina. Yes, yes. Alamina, now to you. What, what, what do you do to make sure that you stay balanced and productive at work? I agree with both of my two, my two colleagues who went before in terms of how they balance. I mean, those are some really, really fantastic ideas. But for me, something that, a couple of things has really, really worked for me in terms of balancing everything um, is to set boundaries. So I try as much as possible to not, uh, to get my weekends free of, of um, professional um, um, pursuits 
So then that's the time I, I ensure I spend with my family because um, with my husband, I, you know, focus on other activities, spending time with friends. And what has also assisted me is having somebody I'm accountable to. So, so that's my husband. So he will come home from work and I will still be at it for a couple of hours. And then he'll say, you know what? I, I think you've been at this long enough. You know, it's time for something else. So then, <laughs> so then I'm like, okay, just, just five more minutes. Let me just wrap up. So then at least because without him saying that, I probably would be there for another two hours because it just seems like it's so much all of the time. And I, I, I do believe in giving back. So um, both Janelle and Charmin mentioned um, community involvement. I do believe in giving back. I, and as Janelle um, said, so I'll reiterate that it should not be about one thing only. Um, we are whole persons. And so we need, we need um, to take care of each and every aspect of our lives. So work-life balance is definitely key to our productivity and, and to actually serving at, um, at our fullest potential. You all hit on um, a very important point. And, and I think because of the COVID-19 pandemic in particular, it's been said many times that women don't take enough time for themselves. We don't stop. We always are concerned with making sure everybody else around us is, is attended to, but we fail to, to, to take care of ourselves. But you've all hit on a very important point that we have to stay we have to step away, we have to take time to reflect, to refresh, to renew so that we are better able to serve and, and be the best versions of ourselves as possible. As professionals, we've all had notable experiences that stand out in our minds that, you know, have brought us to the point we are today. Share with us any experiences that have influenced you, good or bad, uh, particularly as a woman uh, in a professional sense. So I sometimes wear the hat of lecturer in my role as information security analyst at the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. I wear many other hats as well in that role, but for the time being, I'm going to speak on my role as lecturer. When the bank recruits new members, part of the orientation activities is a session with a member from my team on cybersecurity best practices. For some of these new recruits joining the ECTB family, this is their introduction to the workforce. For some of these new recruits, this session with us is their introduction to the concept of cybersecurity. Given the critical importance of cybersecurity in this digital age, my most noteworthy experiences are these opportunities that I am given to welcome new members to ECCB, to positively impact the lives of another person along the lines of their digital well-being, and to lend my voice and my face to a cause that is helping to keep our citizens safe. And the fact that I get to do this as a woman is really, really exceptional for me. Thanks for sharing that, Janelle. As a oh. lecturer, I, I like that. <laughs> Alamina, what of you? What stands out in, in your mind? For me, what stands out is the amount of mentoring and coaching I've actually received along my, in my professional life. So I'm, I'm going to go back to a time pre-ECCB. Um, where I was employed at a commercial bank. And I, I recall sitting on a project when we were autom automating our loan system and being exposed to, it was specifically two, two gentlemen and two ladies. And I was the youngest of the group. I seemed to be pretty young in, in so many places. And I remember there four adults taking me under their wing and just mentoring me and, 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 and pushing me and, and, and speaking to me about my abilities and, and all of that. And then fast forward to, to the ECCB context, as I mentioned before, where, where I did have female supervisors who encouraged me. But no, not only that, I, ha I have experienced some amazing administrative professionals who are so supportive and so encouraging. And, and of course, my, my other um, colleagues as well. And most of us in the department are females. Um, so, so these incidents really stand out to me as, um, as something that has shaped me and molded me into the person I am today in terms of having that support and encouragement and, and, and mentoring. It's really, really important as a professional and especially as a young lady in, in order to, to grow in the, in the professional sphere. That's Shaman. So I will speak about my experience as the Director of Support Services Management Department. So when I took on that role, as you would know, Karina, that's a, a department that's male dominated because it has the entire security unit and the entire facilities management unit, and that's all male. 
So I'm placed in a department where I have to manage over 20 males. And these are persons with different backgrounds, at different levels of the organization. So I had to really adjust. And I can tell you, in the three and a half years that I was director of that department, I grew so much professionally and personally. Every day was a challenge because I'm in a, 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 an area where it's mostly males. And I have to you know, make certain decisions. I have to adjust my management style to deal with different personalities from day to day. I have to make sure that the facilities guys do what they have to do and understand why they have to follow the steps as they're outlined. So, I mean, and these are persons, some of them are older than I was. Some of them have been in the bank longer. So, and you, you meet these different personalities each day. And so for me, that was a tremendous learning experience for me. And I think it was very important in, in me uh, being able to take on the role of, of chief risk officer because then I had to take on the entire bank. Because as chief risk officer, I basically have to take on the entire institution. So being in that role, a male dominated role, it helped me to prepare for the next role, which is the chief officer role. But also it helped me in terms of learning a lot of stuff because now I know all about air conditions and about, about security systems. I know about so many different things, having to interact with these, these persons on a daily basis. So for me, that has been tremendous in my personal and professional growth here at the bank. Now the theme for International Women's Day 2021 is choose to challenge. And it's basically a call for women and men all over the world to challenge notions, ideas, or practices that exist and then demonstrate how they would like to see um, these existing norms and ideas change. Share with us what you would like to challenge, what you choose to challenge. And I'll start with Alamina. Thank you, Karina. So I challenge the misconception that women do not make good leaders. I challenge using issues peculiar to women as a, an excuse or in a fashion that degrades and question her competence as a leader or a manager. Very strong, very strong. Janelle, what do you choose to challenge? There's a strong stereotype in technology and even more acutely in cybersecurity that women do not belong in the industry. The stereotype is slipping, evidenced by my being here, but the discrepancy in the numbers is still present globally. I have come to state my claim in the male dominated field and I'm encouraging other women to state their claim as well. Today, I choose to challenge gender stereotypes in technology. Sharmin, what are you choosing to challenge? So Karina, a few years ago, before Sir K. Dwight Benner retired, he gifted me a book entitled Breaking into the Boys Club. And basically that book speaks about how women can advance themselves in careers and reach to levels that are traditionally male dominated. So for me, I challenge the notion that women can have a seat at the table. And I am saying that from here on, women should have a seat at the table and have their ideas equally content with those of their male counterparts. Thank you for that, Sharmin. Janelle, Sharmin, Alamina, thanks so much for speaking with us on ECCB Connects and for sharing with us what you choose to challenge in celebration of International Women's Day. Karina, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure giving you some sound bites in honor of International Women's Day 2021. Thank you, Karina, for having me. It has been a pleasure. And I look forward to seeing women elevated as we go forward from here on. Thank you. Thank you, Karina, for having me. It's been an awesome experience being here and discussing women challenges with other women at the ECCB. And I look forward to to even younger women taking up management positions within the bank and our region. We've come to the end of another episode of ECCB Connects. Be sure to stay connected with us and join us again next week when we bring you another program to share with you who we are, what we do, and how we serve you.